Ladies and gentlemen, Silent Mike back with another video. Before we get involved, we're gonna talk about how to stay motivated, how to keep going, how for long-term success in the gym with your fitness goals, which if you take these principles and kind of move them into business relationships, they may have some application to allow you longer-term success. Before we get involved, turn on notifications, click that thumbs up, be sure to subscribe, check out Twitch, I'm streaming every single day, we're having a lot of fun. Check out 50% Facts every Wednesday. Comment below what you guys want me to cover in the next video, nutrition, fitness, life, whatever it might be, we'll talk about it and let's dive in. So the question for you guys was, I'm not enjoying lifting right now and it's causing me to not go to the gym for long periods of time. How can I get some spark back to start enjoying the gym? Uh, and now there's a lot of things. You guys kind of know me here on the internet as a powerlifting, strength and conditioning type coach. And you guys see me a lot of times in my highlights, right? Cause that's all I can show on the internet. I'm not gonna film myself laying on the couch in the conversation I'm having with myself to not want to go to the gym today. Or while I'm actually in the gym, I'm not filming the conversation in my head or showing you my thoughts like, man, I really just want to skip cardio. I just want to head home. Or when I'm sitting at, at my kitchen right now and I want to, I want to go just order a hamburger on Uber Eats rather than cooking up, uh, you know, a little bit of steak and eating some veggies with it. You don't see those conversations, but I'm just as human as all you guys, and it happens to all of us. We go through lulls. Motivation is fleeting. Uh, discipline's hopefully what's going to keep us going. But even that. When outside stress of our life gets involved, it's gonna be very difficult for us to juggle everything, and that's just life. The older you get, it gets slightly easier to control some of these stressors. Hopefully you're self-aware enough to start to eliminate some of the negative and start to enhance the positive in your life, whether that be relationship, business, and we find our own path. But sometimes, you know, stuff just happens and we get involved with negativity, drama, stress from work, stress from friendships, relationships, wives, husbands, boyfriends, girlfriends, work, whatever it might be, and it becomes a speed bump can affect and ripple down effect and the gym you know our self time our our, our, our meditation whatever it is to you maybe our cardio eating healthy those things are what we really need to start focusing on during those times to allow us to be in the right mental state and personal state to handle the stressors that's coming. Um, I've trained people for over 12 years now in the gym. Um, you know, over the last seven years on the internet, it's been more powerlifting based, but I've worked with tons of um, high school and college athletes, basketball, rugby, etc. A lot of uh, just everyday people, uh, people with normal jobs, whether it's doctors, uh, salespeople, whatever it might be, um, you know, the elderly, some people that are retired, uh, people going through injuries, rehabs, whatever it might be. So if I have a scope of people and they all come down to at some point not wanting to work out, not wanting to get out of bed, whatever you want to call it, depression, a lull, we all have these negatives. And these are just some tips that I've found out help me get back in the gym and have helped some of the people that I've coached over time. Some of them may seem a little bit corny and they may seem a little bit cliche and maybe you read them in People's Magazine, um, but for me, they've worked. And so, uh, Let's dig in. Uh, number one is always gonna be goal setting for me. Uh, whenever you have a direct goal with a direct timeline, there's something that clicks into the human mind, and especially if you're a competitive athlete in your past, present, whatever it might be, those things will allow us to kick in, shift into a next gear, and you're gonna train differently. Um, now, some of them may be simple. Hey, I have a wedding to go to, and I wanna drop 10 pounds by May 10th. Um, that's a date and kind of a, you know, something you want to look a little bit better for the wedding. You want to be in pictures, whatever it might be. And sometimes it might have to be a little bit extreme. Hey, I haven't done a competitive sport since high school or college, um, but I'm going to sign up for a powerlifting meet come July. And now you're really putting your buttocks on the line and, and things are going to get a little bit more extreme. Maybe you're going to take more care and get your sleep, taking more care of getting your food because you're putting, uh, you know, your reputation on the line and, and you're going to walk the walk and talk the talk. So those are a couple things that I look into. It all depends on your goals overall. And for me right now, I've gone through similar lulls. You know, I've had this back issue going on for my whole life, but more dramatically the last two or three years. Um, and again, you know, you all know me as a powerlifter. I don't love powerlifting competitions, but I do love lifting heavy. And right now I just can't deadlift heavy. It's just not possible for my body. So I've had to switch gears and change my mentality to focusing in on my health. I've made a goal in my mind to find better balance in my life, having a little bit of fun with my food, having a glass of wine at dinner, while still getting my cardio in, and I'm slowly trying to get into the best shape of my life. And right now, cardiovascularly, I'm not as in good shape as when I played college basketball, uh, but I am in better cardiovascular shape than I've ever been 
uh, probably since I was 22. And so those are really good goals for me and they're allowing me to stay steady in the gym. I'm adding minutes on the, on the uh, elliptical every day, on the step mill, I'm speeding up my supersets, I'm lowering my rest times between training and all those things aren't visual to you. It's not a deadlift PR I can put on Instagram and it's not a flexing bicep with extra veins, but for me, that's progress and that's enough for me to continue to push towards those goals. So soon, I'm gonna take that cardio, I'm gonna add it in with my nutrition, I'm gonna start lifting a little bit heavier and I am gonna look the best I've ever looked in my life. Those are my long-term goals for 2019. And so if you get short-term goals, medium-term goals, you get a month, month, month out, six months out, and a year out, I think you can stick better to the plan. Um, here's one of the cornier ones, but you know, honestly, maybe it's just me because I'm kind of a sneaker head. Uh, I like clothes, but tip number two is buy something that, that you can use and get excited about in the gym. Um, whether that's a, a training session with a coach, maybe that's visiting a new gym. Maybe you're going to go see, um, you know, your favorite local gym. If you live in LA, you're going to take a day trip and go deadlift at Barbell Brigade, whatever it might be. Maybe a new pair of sneakers, maybe some clothes. For me, uh, what really gets me going when, it, when I have new stuff is making a new music playlist or a buying some new headphones or something like that. I use really crappy earbuds for the longest time. And so when I got some nice earbuds in the gym and I could, uh, they're sound canceling, uh, and I could go in the gym and just jam out some of my music. I made a new playlist. All that gets me really excited. A new pair of sneakers can often make you excited. New squat shoes, new belt, whatever it might be. And so some of that is um, short lived. Uh, it won't last forever, that excitement about that product uh, or about that new item, but it may allow you to get in the gym just that extra push for that week and then you can find your role. And once you're rolling on anything and you start to get in your groove, things become a lot easier. Tip number three kind of locks in with tip number one in a different way, but tip number three would be find or try something new or go to something old that you used to love. Um, when I hit my biggest lull, I tried to come back from deadlifting. I hit like a 585 deadlift within the last six months and I blew my back out a little bit again. I think I have a, you know, the disc issue. I was just like, all right, I'm going to totally U-turn and I'm going to go back to what I used to love, what's healthy, what's exercise. And I started playing basketball about three or four times a week. Uh, and for you, that might be something brand new. You've never tried yoga and now you want to go try yoga with some friends. You've never done a, a biking class, a spin bike class. You're going to go do that. You've never power lifted and now you want to focus on strength, whatever it is but trying something new or doing something different, whether that could be as simple as trying a new pro, if you're a power lifter, trying a new program or coach, or if you're a power lifter going over here and trying yoga, either way, just switching up, trying a new routine, a new form of working out. When the weather gets better, my favorite thing to do is to go for bike rides. Um, does that directly correlate with all my strength goals or, or my aesthetic goals? A little bit, uh, you know, going for a casual bike ride isn't probably the best cardio for me to get into my leanest aesthetic shape, but it's a way for me to burn a little extra calories and free my mind. It's my meditation. It allows me to relieve some stress listening to music, or whatever. Uh, and I guess the fourth tip, this is kind of just an add on. The fourth tip is to start to find routine and to mitigate stress, stress from life is all the same. So we have one little barrel of this, the amount of stress that we can handle. And if you're deadlifting, you know, your face off five times a week, you're going through a divorce, you're eating crappy, you're sleeping crappy, your work's piling up, you gotta do work in overtime, all these things are happening. The stress is stress is stress and your body can't adapt to all that at once. So we have to start to find different things, meditation, extra sleep, extra water, extra happy family time, going for a walk, watching your favorite movie, watching you know comedy, whatever it might be for you to start to relieve some of these stressors so then we can overall recover and hopefully live a slightly happier life. And a happy is gonna be obviously a whole vague, different wormhole we can go down, how to find happiness, how to find success. But for me, it's about finding the routine that allows me to do what it is I enjoy and I can do for a long period of time. Watching your favorite Rocky Three movie uh, is really good motivation for maybe one workout or one hour, uh, but these other tips will hopefully allow you success over the long period of time. Guys, let me know what you think below. Comment below what you want me to cover in the next video. Keep those questions coming, I'm gonna keep answering them. Man, do I appreciate you guys. I'll see you on Twitch. I'll see you Monday, Thursday, brand new video. Salam Mike, I'm out of here.